Hello students, welcome to basic science class and as you all know my name is Oilami Trinity today. Today we'll be talking about the topic titled force. So before I go ahead I would like to implore you to make sure you're sitting at a place that you can not be distracted or maybe noises cannot affect you and be very certain you have your notebook and your pen there so we can have a very interactive class so uh, before I continue I would like to talk about the corrections to previous assessments that we've done so far okay I must commend you I'm really blown away by your by your performance okay looking at the multiple choice questions none of you scored below five as in when is over 10 or when is over 20 for only multiple choice i'm so so delighted that you really make it very well so um because our theory parts you cannot be marked or you can't get your score immediately except i do it on my own so i've decided to do the correction so we can be on the same page to know what is what the right answer and moving forward you'll be sure of what you are doing so back to the correction of the theory the first question on that f in space question one question one says what do you understand by the globe so from what I explained to you, I said um, the globe, you know, with the pictorial representation that I showed you is somehow like a ball and on that ball you have several locations of uh, places you can think of in the whole earth as Y O Y word. Okay, so my answer here says uh, the globe is a model or structural representation of how Earth looks like and can be used to study the relative position of places on the Earth. So you can use globe for that. Then question two says, um, explain the reasons why Pluto's status was downgraded from full planet to, to a dwarf planet okay my answer reason one is that pluto orbit is relatively inclined when you say orbits following the path it takes around the sun okay the orbit is relatively inclined at 17 degrees from the picture i showed you in the class you know i was able to explain how it's affecting the neighboring um planet because it's not assuming same um angle that every other planet is making with um with the plane uh, horizontal plane okay the second one is that pluto does not have enough gravity to pull itself into spherical shape that means he, he, he is not able to assume the normal shape his shape is kind of um more elliptical is kind of egg shape is not as um, spherical as the other ones are so the question three says describe the solar system so the solar system is sun and everything that travels around it so the celestial bodies that travels around the sun include all the planets and their moons along with the comets asteroids and other space objects like dwarf um, planets that orbit the sun. So, you know, when I marked your work, I saw a lot of answer because I know many of you used um, research techniques such as internet or Facebook, and they are really, they are really great. I can tell you, you have very nice. And brilliant answer for those questions but I'm just doing this for people that join us maybe halfway or maybe probably they don't understand for them to have more understanding about what we've discussed then the first question says describe the planets okay all planets that 
uh, you can call planets all objects okay anything in the in the sky that celestial body you know celestial body is all about everything in the sky okay the moon the planets uh, and all sorts so all objects or you can say all celestial objects whichever one that have great masses when you say something has great masses that means they are very big okay which move like the earth around the sun are called planets okay they all move around the sun that's what it means so yeah other you know in your explanation you can go ahead and name all the planets that we have which you have here and for your class drill for your class drill i ask you to name five places as it depicts on the um, globe so you can name Lagos, you can name uh, a city in America, you can name in Great Britain, anywhere, any part of the world. You can just pick five locations and give it to me. Okay, that's no problem. So when you, we come to second topic, which is energy, we talked about, the first question says, explain transformation of energy. So as we all know, is a change from one form of uh, energy to another and you know this change follows a law called law of uh, conservation of energy and the law states energy can neither be created okay nor destroyed you can neither create energy nor destroy it but it can be changed from one form to another just by changing your heat energy to light energy your electrical energy to mechanical energy and all that okay examples we have all these examples i said give me three so i named three for you chemical to lights where you have your kerosene stove is made of chemical um source and it's transformed into what light energy by giving you boiling your rice for you or you have a lantern, candle, and all that. Chemical to energy to eat energy, you have their examples there. Chemical energy to mechanical energy, you have it there too. So moving to question two on the, that topic, I said list and explain five sources of energy. Answer, the first one on my list is solar energy. As we all know, solar is light energy from sun and is the ultimate. Without it, there won't be um, um, life might not be able to continue. Okay, the second one is wind power. Okay, I explained it right here. I drew electric power, same thing here. Food, you know in food, you have energy. Okay, it's somehow called chemical energy. Okay, in food, energy is being released that is during digestion when the food you eat digests energy being released in form of heat is used in respiration okay and this energy in form of heat and mechanical energy is also used to do work when you heat you have energy to work okay so biofuel these are from plants as well as animal question four so i asked you to calculate this I said during a football match, a ball of mass 20 kg was moving with velocity of 50 meter per second. Okay, calculate kinetic energy using kinetic energy equals to half mv squared. Okay, some people are using two here. It's squared. Okay, and squared has to do with the velocity, not the whole thing. Okay, so solution now. Using this formula, we have mass of 20 kg, we have velocity of 50 meter per second. Okay, substituting this and this into that equation that we have here, m is 20, v is 50 squared. Okay, so you have to do this squared first, which will give you what, 2500 times 20. Then you now find half of what you've got in there then the answer gives you 25,000 joules don't forget that's the unit si units for um work done or kinetic energy or energy generally so today we are going to talk about um our objective don't forget the topic for this today is titled force so on the objective we have to know the definition of force okay and we have to be able to explain types of forces that we have with examples 
have to be able to give the examples and uh, we have to know how to solve some calculation okay on gravitational forces these are our objective at the end of this class we should be able to do all this okay so i divided it into two the part one is the one we are going to treat right now but part two will come in later be next class so we have to do all this in our part two in our next class so over to the beginning of this class we have the concept of force what we know our idea everything we study about force so force number one force changes the state of rest of a body or an object moving in a straight line in a particular direction okay that's why we are talking of direction and we are as well talking of a straight line in a particular direction we are talking of um, direction and as well we'll be talking about the um, change change of state that means is what is called vector quantity we'll get there so simply called a push or pull you can define force to be a push or pull you can divide it define it to be the first one and you can as well define it to be the third one which is um it moves an object in a direction of applied force and another way of defining force is that you can say is a vector quantity vector quantity means it has both magnitude and direction that means it can be measured as well. It has a direction that is adding to. Okay. So those are the four things you can use in classifying or defining force. So the SI unit of force is Newton. SI units. We need to know about that. Okay. This acronym is gotten from... Um, is a is a kind of um, French um, word system international okay so international system units that's what it means in English but the acronym is from French word so the the unit of measuring force is called Newton and the force applied on an object can be calculated using this formula which is force equals to mass times acceleration acceleration is um the increase in speed of an object okay times acceleration then we can use it like this force stands for half then uh, mass you can represent it with m and your acceleration can be represented by with a rather so these are the examples of force for instance, a person nailing, um, nailing a, a kind of maybe a plank or wood, just like you have in the picture here, you see a nail being put on the, on the tree and being nailed with armor. So you are applying force to do that. Then same thing, people pushing broken down vehicle, just you see here. So there's a force being applied here too. Then the third one is the tugboat pulling a ship. As you can see here, those are the three examples I give to you. Then you can see more pictures of those examples there. So this kind of armor using armor to nail um, a bench or any wooden parts. So let's look at our class activity for today. What I want you to do during the after this class is get don't mind me using this feature anyway but don't try it do not try this at home with a gas cylinder empty or not okay so what i'm trying to pass across is that you have to roll an empty drum position horizontally just like this you have to let it slip lie like this it should be empty then you try to push okay do do you feel any force while pushing it that's what i'm asking so you have to answer that do you feel any force what happen when you what roll and stop rolling the drum during the time you are rolling on horizontal floor 
what do you notice what are the things that happens okay so you have to tell me that as well as when you stop rolling the drum what happened you have to tell me then name the type of force applied by you on the drum okay you get there by the time we talk about types of forces okay this is another one another person rolling drum is an empty drum anyway it was filled with oil initially but it's now empty being rolled by a cartoon <laughs> okay so class activity two you have to take a towel soak it then you get another person together with you try to squeeze it so the activity goes does a wet um towel should be held by two individuals you and another person facing each other each person holding one loose end of the towel so you can see them holding it there both should squeeze the towel in opposite direction when you are squeezing it to the right the person the other person should squeeze to the left in a manner that the towel squeezed out squeezes out water okay do you feel any force that's what i want to know tell me the your answer do you feel any force is the force less or lesser greater or the same when you when only one person squeeze the towel okay one person can just hold it without squeezing and the other person continue to squeeze so tell me if the force apply is was well, is lesser during this process or maybe is greater than when you both squeeze together and at the same time you should tell me maybe is the same when one person squeeze so i want to see your answer in of the class activities okay types of forces now the first one we are going to talk about is contact force is a type of force which becomes effective only when there is physical contact touch or connection between the source of the force and the objects just like you have in push pull and frictional um, forces those are the examples of uh, contact force contact force means you have to come in contact with that thing have a physical um contact like maybe touching just like pushing the car or nailing um the wall and all that so that one is kind of contact force then the second one is non-contact force or you call it um force feed either of the two okay is a type of force whose effect can be felt in an area that is covered by force feed okay this is not require this does not require physical contact with the body before it acts example of regions where force field can be experienced are magnetic field okay electric field and gravitational field those are the examples where you can feel the force field or non-contact forces okay these are the picture representing types of forces we have this under here you have the contact one and here you have the non-contact okay have a very good look at them and you can be able to differentiate between the two types of forces that we have okay explanation of an experiment carried out um i try to carry out an experiment so i want to explain it to you since we won't be able to do it right now but hopefully we'll do it later after this whole lockdown so the first thing these are the procedure you have to take the first step is that you get a cardboard just like your normal cardboard you place a cardboard on a flat wooden table get a wooden table place your cardboard on it okay then put a bar magnet i'll show you a bar magnet soonest now put a bar magnet under the table you know under this wooden table take your bar magnet and put it under 
And step two is that you should sprinkle some iron filings on the cardboard. On the cardboard that you've laid flat on the table, try to put some, okay? File, iron filing is maybe when they file the iron, okay? The little crumbs you have there, you sprinkle it on the cardboard. And when you sprinkle it, step three says, tap the surface of the cardboard gently. After putting IO filing, just tap it. You know, don't forget that your bar magnet has been placed under the table, not on the table, under. Okay, so the step four says you should observe how the iron filing cluster, cluster around one region of the cardboard. Okay, the, the iron filing will cluster around a particular region. That region can be classified as the region where you have the phosphate. That means you have the magnetic phosphate. That's the area, the neighborhood in which magnet has effects on. Okay, is the region closer or farther away from the position of the bar magnet under the table? You can do it and just come up with your, just know. It's good to experiment as a scientist, okay? So the, the sixth step says, now remove the bar magnet and tap the surface of cardboard and observe scattered arrangements of iron firing. So in a nutshell, what you do here is that when you put uh, the bar magnets underneath the table and you sprinkle iron filing on the cardboard, you tap it, you feel this magnetic uh, attraction between the iron filing and the magnets. Even though the magnet is far away from where iron filing is, that means within that environment, there is a magnetic uh, force feed. That's the neighborhood where, okay, see it now. These are iron filing, okay? This is a bar magnet. So it tends to attract the iron filing to itself. That's what happens there, okay? Then you can as well see it in some other ones. Okay, this is the effect of magnetic um, field on iron filing. These are the iron filing. You see the effect. So round like this, you have what we call the magnetic force field. Sorry, magnetic force field. That means anything placed in this environment, it will definitely attracts it to itself okay so these are the lines showing the force feed too so even if you put any iron as far as here it will attract so that's what the all the pictorial representation is all about so moving to gravitational force gravitational force this is a force on a body due to gravity okay and graffiti is a force which attracts or pulls objects towards the head in a vertical manner, okay? Take for example, when you throw something up, that thing will definitely come down. Why, why have you ever thought of why is this thing coming down? Why not stay there or you keep going higher? It's due to this force called graffiti, okay? It tends to pull anything back to the ground, okay? That's why it's a force which attracts or pulls objects towards the earth. Earth is the ground, okay? In a vertical manner. So the second one is that gravitational force can be explained if the earth were to stop exerting a pulling force on objects, objects will float when released. For instance, when you throw something up, the thing will just stay there, not coming down, not going up. So, but due to force of gravity, we can always have our ball go up and come down. You can always throw a baby, give a baby a slight push and the baby will come back to your hand. Okay, the third one is the object thrown up may not come down if someone jumps up it will keep rising, okay, if there's no force of gravity. The next one is that the gravitational force on an object of mass M can be measured using spring balance. 
Spring balance is kind of um, an equipment used in measuring the mass of an object. So this is how it looks like. So here you have the hanger where you can hang it somewhere or tie rope to it and hang it somewhere. And here you have to attach the um, load you want to weigh there. And here are the um, pointers. Okay, this is the pointer and these are the values. Okay, it depends on how heavy the load is. The pointer will always take it down if it's 80 kilograms, if it's 95, like that, and all that. So here, looking at this, there's a force pulling the object down. That's called um, mass mg. That's mass times uh, gravity because force of gravity always pull the load down to the head. So here you have forces downward. Okay, is it on here? So you see the load being pulled downward. That's force of gravity. And this is the hanger which it's hang. Um, the spring balance is being hung. Okay, so we are going to look at calculations of gravitational forces. Um, gravitational the gravitational force which is given acronym GF on a body of mass M at a point is equal to the weight of the body at that point. Okay, so the energy stored in mass M when raised over a distance H above the ground is given by formula MGH. For instance, you have an object of mass 10 kg now is now being raised, okay? being thrown up through a distance or a height of so so meters so you can always calculate your work done okay that's g is always constant is given as force of graffiti so look at it here work done equals to mgh where m stands for mass of the Objects in kilogram G stands for acceleration due to gravity at that point, which is given as 9.8 or approximately 10 meter per second squared. Okay, and H stands for the vertical heights or distance through which the body is being um, pushed. Okay, so generally for an object of mass m, the gravitational force equals to mg, that's mass times um, acceleration due to gravity, that's g, which is 9.8 or 10 as the case may be. So SI unit for calculating force is Newton, don't forget that. And the work done in raising an object of mass m through an height um, H equals to MGH. Work done is calculated in joules. Okay, just like energy is calculated in joules. Okay, examples. If a mass of a parcel is 10 kg, calculate the weight of the parcel. G is given as 10 meter per second square. So, as you all know, mass is 10 kg. Acceleration due to gravity on the parcel to pull it down is a uh, 10 meter per second and weight is close to mg right don't forget uh um w equals to gravitational what force okay which is mg which gives us a uh, mass which is 10 kg times acceleration due to gravity which is um 10 meter per second square and our answer will be 100 newton don't forget the work done or the SI unit of force is Newton because work done is acting on a force. Okay, so the second one is that a mass of 300 grams is acted upon by a force which produces an acceleration of this. Calculate the force. Okay, don't forget the formula for a force is... um. Um, MA, which is mass times acceleration. Here, the acceleration is not acceleration due to gravity. It's the increase in speed, okay? Because it's neither thrown 
up or descending downward okay so m a m stands for mass you know a standard uh, metric measurement for for mass should be kilogram so you have to convert the gram to kilogram by dividing by 1000 okay when you divide by 1000 it gives you um 0 0.3 kg then you now multiply the mass which is in kg now times your acceleration ma don't forget the formula f equals to ma so it will give us 1.5 newton which is unit of force Okay, same thing with this last one. What's the work done by a man who lifts a block of 30 kg through a height of 3 meters? Okay, we have been given... One thing you have to notice when you have been given question, notice all the parameters. Parameters means all the things given there. Here you are given the mass. Here you are given what? The distance, which could be your height in this case. So using work done equals to... You are asked to calculate work done. Work done is what? MGH. M stands for mass. G stands for acceleration due to gravity given as 10 meter per second square. And your H stands for meters or distance or height. Okay, which is 3 meters. So when you put that one together, MGH, MA, GA, and HA gives you 900 joules. That's the unit for work done, don't forget. And the unit for, for force, when you are asked to calculate force, which is F equals to MA, we give you what? It gives you um, Newton, that's the unit for force, okay? So try and do your class activity, which I'm going to need the answer soonest, and stay safe. Bye.